Okay, so number four, you're bitching about conservatives not playing in good faith is a waste of time. Uh, this guy puts up some pretty good uh, pop culture quotes through here. Uh, he, he's got a Doctor Who quote up there. Uh, but I can hear the filthy liberals reading <laughs> reading this so, uh, who already just audibly sighed and got angry because they're pissed about the fact that it's a massive uphill battle. Yeah, it's a massive uphill battle. All, all progressive causes are massive uphill battles. Um, you're going to bitch about the Electoral College and the gerrymandering and voter ID and all the ways that liberals are being deprived of a fair shake in government and conservatives not engaging in good faith. And there is a lot of that. There's a lot of blocks on both sides of the aisle, right? It, 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 the, the Green New Deal is a great example of that. When, when the first Green New Deal came out, uh, there was a lot of pushback from both the Democrats and the Republicans. Actually, going even further back, we talked about FDR earlier. The New Deal had pushback from uh, Democrats and Republicans. The Republicans, again, used their marketing machine um, and the creation of the religious right to co-opt the working class to propagandize that the New Deal was actually going to be bad for them because if corporations um, don't succeed, then they can't trickle their wealth down to their employees instead of having like protections for the employees and stuff. Uh, and two Republicans uh, crafted the Taft-Hartley bill, which, uh, which killed the unions. Uh, so, you know what wasn't fair? Decades of getting kicked in the teeth as global trade and automation and debt traps pounded rural economies based on the agriculture and manufacturing while progressive policies promised help that never came. Yeah, that kind of sucks. Uh, my people aren't going to play in good faith because they see no reason to and they have no incentive to trust liberals in their playbook. Playing dirty is getting them what they want. Uh, compromising never did. Uh, and that kind of sucks that that's the that's the that's sort of the reality of, of of the mentality there uh at least conservatives are honest about the fact that my people are on their own and can't expect meaningful assistance from the government and to that i say if that's what the conservatives are saying why are you backing up the conservatives as somebody in the rural community as somebody that used to come from a proud working class ethic Somebody that says, if you fall on hard times, don't expect the government to help you out. You're on your own. That's your fault. You fell on hard times on your own. And conservatives still vote for politicians in the Republican Party that say that shit to them. It's, it's this very strange cognitive dissonance that I don't... I, I, I've really tried to understand, and I will continue to try to understand as much of that as possible... Because it's it's baffling and it and it's kind of like tragic to me because I don't want these people to to have to go through something like that. I don't want I don't want them to go through a hard time and then look upon politicians and a and a political ideology that they have trusted only for that ideology and that politician to look back at them and say, "You got yourself in this mess. You get yourself out. You can go fuck yourself." That's not fucking fair at all. That's crazy. This tracks with the experience. Uh, this tracks with their experience. Progressives spent decades over compromising and under delivering. At least when they elect Republicans, they get what they pay for. If you're going to get kicked in the ass, you might as well get lower taxes out of it. Okay, that kind of answers the kind kind of answers the question that I had. Uh, as PJ O'Rourke once noted, the Democrats are the party that says government will make you smarter, taller, and richer, and remove the crabgrass on your lawn. The Republicans are the party that says government doesn't work, uh, and then they get elected to prove it, which goes back to the earlier point that I was making. <laughs> Me and PJ O'Rourke, man. Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying uh, you need to take the low road and get in the mud. Uh, as my people say, if you wrestle with the pig in the sty, all that happens is you get dirty and the pig likes it. I'm saying you need to quit being surprised, have a plan for that, and then be better at controlling the message around it. Bernie's socialism shtick is screwing y'all over. It's the same liberal strategy that's gotten you where you are. Promise a metric to a, a shit ton that's going to be imposed on us, whether we like it or not, and then we all get to live with the catastrophic failure when it implodes. Yeah, I gotta say, um, Bernie's been a little bit of a disappointment this run. Um, I was very disappointed at his performance. I, I I like what he says, and I think after all of this, uh, some of you guys know that I'm a, I was a big Tulsi supporter. 
and she kind of uh, shit the bed. Bernie shit the bed. Uh, and I kind of came to the realization of something I think I was denying for a long time, which is that people like Bernie Sanders, Tulsi Gabbard, Joe Biden, Elizabeth Warren, Donald Trump, these are all mascots for an idea. Um, and what we need to do is support the idea and, and stay true to our belief systems and support each other. Um, talk to each other about these ideas. Uh, talk to each other about, uh, you know, taking care of each other. Uh, so that is sort of really, really important in this situation. I, I look at these people as mascots. I don't look at them as the be all end all of these ideas. Um, so, uh, yeah. Mark Viola. The New Deal passed with stringent support from rural communities. There's no social security without farmers and rural folk. Yes, good point, Mark. Uh, excellent point. Um, yeah, the religious right is is really what, uh, there, there was a, a, a very uh, attractive pastor. I, I did a piece about this a couple of years ago, but this guy basically got corporations involved to kill the New Deal. Um, yeah. Uh, so... Thank you for that comment, Mark. Okay, uh, we got one more section and then we're done. Uh, thank you guys for hanging in there with me. <laughs> okay, number five. Not everything unjust is racist and not everything that's racist is intentionally racist. Okay, uh, words matter. What words we use matters. I tried to tell liberals this when they compared Mitt Romney to Hitler and Mussolini. I was told to go away. Uh, and here, here we are. My people won't listen to you anymore because everything is racist. Everything is over the top, or at least so they feel. And I get that criticism. I understand that criticism from both sides. There is a ton of injustice in this country, and a solid 70% of it is continued trauma and inertia from slavery and its successors. Being anything not white in this country does put you at an inherent automatic disadvantage compared to the advantage of being white. Very important thing to acknowledge. Uh, and a lot of it is trauma and inertia from slavery and the way that slavery has been transformed um, into modern labor politics. What do I mean by that? Uh, look at the way that I brought up the Taft-Hartley bill. It kills unionization. It protects corporations. Look at the way Amazon workers are treated. Look at the way Walmart employees are treated. I mean, they get pittance. Like seven, like minimum wage being seven twenty-five an hour is wage theft. Like it's the literally the bare minimum of what they can do for you to not call it slavery. Internships also are real. That's nobody's getting paid there to do work. Some of uh, some of that has to do with actual racism, and some of that has to do with disadvantages disadvantages of poverty, which largely exist because of prior actual racism, and there's a lot of catching up to do. But when everything becomes a matter of outrageous injustice, it does start to become less meaningful. When the outrage is constant, it starts to become background noise. When everything is racist, eventually nothing really is to conservatives. I have had that argument before. Um, and then it's very difficult to backpedal and say, okay, I understand that, that you're kind of listening to this cacophony, but here's the argument and then I have to make the argument. Um, I was in Biloxi, Mississippi, uh, great fucking great town. And there's a, a venue called Wayward Kraken. And we had a really interesting conversation after the show where they asked me if I believe Donald Trump was racist. And I said, yes, uh, I believe that he is. And I believe that he's purposely racist because, uh, and he's purposely xenophobic because there's evidence uh, that he used the old Klan tactic to make sure that black people wouldn't live in his buildings in New York, uh, which is to when a black person would come in and they would fill out an application, they would mark the application so that they don't have to consider it. He also hires uh, undocumented workers. And before the job, just before it's almost done and he has to pay them, he calls immigration on them and gets them deported. These are all intentionally racist things, right? Um, and it's 
it's difficult because these are the things that we have to talk about when we talk about intentional racism, not just blan blanketly saying, well, everything Donald Trump does is racist. No, there's specific things that he does are racist. And let's talk about those specific things. And let's talk about how they've affected the communities and what we can do uh, to fight, to push back and fight back against this stuff. Um, and that's kind of, you know, what conservatives need to hear. Uh, because a lot of these conservatives don't want to be associated with the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> uh, appropriately challenging racism and injustice is tough. It's hard to see something that is de deeply upsetting and uh, not want to just yell in rage at it. I get that. I do it a lot. It's rarely successful. I feel uh, I feel statements are ineffective. Putting a human face uh, on an injustice is very effective. That is how what you said, uh, that is how what you just said was hurtful to me can be effective. Don't try this offline. Most of the time you're dealing with trolls who don't give a shit, but in person it can be very effective. And, and for the most part, it can be. Um, when, when I used to talk to my conservative father-in-law, that's, that's what I would point out. I would say, hey, here, here's what you're saying is, um, you know, I understand what you're saying, but here's why what you're saying is, you know, hurtful and uh, where these communities of color that you are speaking out against are coming from. Most conservatives and most of my people aren't being racist on purpose, uh, and that's why they actually get offended when you call them that. They honestly don't know why what they said or did was racist or otherwise unjust. They just have a very, very simplified view of what that means. Yeah, uh, it's not that they don't understand uh, things like microaggressions, uh, they just don't have the same context for it. They understand trauma, but very differently. They understand disadvantage, but very differently. Uh, take a calm, calming breath and respond in kindness. Explain to them what was said is hurtful and why most of my people are not intentionally hurtful. They are trying. They they're not trying to be racist. They're they literally don't understand why they said. Uh, what they said was hurtful. And that's one of the comments that Jay brought up, right? Um, is this sort of ignorance and blindness uh, to it. And they don't understand how making a joke about a Mexican stealing a TV and rural people being called hicks and them not liking it is the same. They can't see that. <laughs> so sometimes it's like, okay, whew, Here's why. And, and if you explain it, I think you'll probably end up getting um, a halfway decent response. Uh, people do switch sides if they have a good reason. So writing off my people as a lost cause. Uh, so quit writing off my people as a lost cause. Honestly, this one bothers me the most. I can't tell you how many liberals who are thoroughly convinced that every Trump supporter and every Republican is a lost cause and will never, ever change. Uh, one of your own standard bearers changing sides, Elizabeth Warren. She was a Republican and a diehard conservative not that long ago. She was 47 when she switched sides after she spent a long time dealing with bankruptcies and foreclosures as a lawyer and then uh, through having her grad assistants research that. She was convinced uh, of the Republican line before then that people failed the consumer game because they were bad at it and made bad choices <clears throat> and scammed the system. She found that people in bankruptcy were often a lot different than the irresponsible deadbeats she'd believed them to be. She eventually saw how corporate America had been trapping people into debt cycles for a long time, and that's how we got Liz Warren we see today. Which is also very confusing why she made a public statement that she wasn't going to talk to conservatives. Um, you know, it, it doesn't... Uh, um, it didn't make sense to me when she said that. I, I don't know if she was just trying to play up to the to the base or or, or what it was, but it, it it she comes from that background, so she kind of knows. If there was anybody in the race that should have been able to talk to the rural community, talk to Republican voters, and get them to understand progressive policy, it should have been Liz Warren. And I was very surprised and disappointed to hear that from her. Um, there are a lot of Obama Trump voters who voted for hope and change and then turned around and voted for Trump. Okay. Uh, and perhaps this shouldn't be entirely surprising. 
there were a lot of people, especially the rural voters from where I'm from, who voted for Obama, though they thought they were going, uh, who voted for Obama thought they were going to get hope and change. And they got shit on with the recovery from the 2008 financial collapse. They didn't get the bailouts or the assistance. They didn't get their jobs back. They didn't see most of the recovery. Their industries, their towns all remained in Lewis, ruins. Uh, God bless David Wong over at Crack who fucking nailed it with this PC links a piece to the to the thing. Uh, and it was written before Trump was elected. So that should tell you that it wasn't some liberal soul searching afterwards. It was a warning. Farm bankruptcies were already rising under Obama at small dairy, uh, small dairies and crop farmers went under more and more due in large part to predatory debt traps and then a freeze on credit. The CFPB helped a little, which is why you're seeing these skyrocket under Trump's the massive deregulatory push. And now this is going to happen again, by the way. They're doing this again. They're waiting for people to be in these rent debts, these mortgage debts. Uh, the agricultural industry is, um, is 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 dumping their food. I mean, like they're, they're, they could just you give it as a donation and get a tax write off or something. There has to be a way to to donate their their food to to food pantries and shelters uh, in in these various areas, uh, but they're not. And these farms are 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 going to end up with um, mortgage back payments of three months, which is no different than what they do when you can't pay. Your, your your mortgages or anything like that. And uh, and they're going to get screwed at the end of it. 100%. This is going to happen. Um, and we're, I mean, we're, we're seeing the beginnings of this. So, you know, push back against that. Push back against the narrative that we don't need a, a total freeze um, on rents and mortgages right now. And support the, the strikes that are happening. To, to get that through, because if not, then we'll see the same thing that happened in 2008. But my people felt betrayed by eight years of Obama. They saw their health insurance get more and more expensive, and all the growth in the stock market sure then seemed to help them. So when Hillary ran effectively as Obama's third term, they were willing uh, to throw their lot in with Trump, who they believed knew the secret sauce to being rich was going to somehow share it with everybody. They really thought that he was going to somehow strong arm China into uh, playing better and everything else. Many of them still do. They think they're going to get the uh, change that they were promised under Obama. And believe me, plenty of them feel just as betrayed and ready to burn the whole thing to the ground because they feel uh, just as betrayed by both sides. Some of them are sticking with Trump, even though uh, they know he's burning everything to the ground, because at least then they'll have the government off their backs. If everything's going to shit either way, might as well go for the one who is uh, going to get rid of all of those pesky regulations about why they can't drain off the backs, uh, back willows and get a few extra acres. My people are not ideologues for the most part. They don't actually care about small government conservatism or the nanny state. Uh, those are just convenient things they're repeating as stand-ins for what they really want. They really want the basics of a fair shake in life, reasonable rules that make sense, and general security. They want the Res Roosevelt Square deal. They want to be. Uh, they want to quit being punished for working hard when it does feel like some others are gaming the system. Corporations mostly. Uh, they want a path to retirement. They want to be able to try their hand at business. They want to be able to send their kids to a good school. Uh, they want to live in a safe neighborhood. They want to drive on decent roads. They want a hospital that isn't hundreds of miles away and that won't bankrupt them. All of these things, by the way, sh you should not be punished for wanting these things. And right now we have a system that does punish you for wanting these things or it, it, it holds you hostage. Like your health insurance should not be tied to your work. So if you're a small business owner or if you're uh, if you're a small rural farmer, and you should not be paying astronomical fees to get health insurance. Uh, you should not have to take out crazy fucking loans to send your kids to college. That should not be things that should happen. You should not have to have your retirement tied into into the the fucking stock exchange with a four hundred one k. That's all. 
that's all ridiculous. It's all how the oligarchy basically controls every aspect of our life, which goes back to how slavery has been transformed. Anyway, um, they want laws and regulations that are logical and not overburdensome, and most of all, something they have uh, uh, some say over. They want to put food on the table. They want basic dignity and respect. They want progressives to want, uh, they want what progressives want to give them, and they'll gladly pay their taxes if they think they're actually going to sell them, uh, if they're actually going to get it. Sell them on how your policies will give them that, and seriously, you can make progressives out of lifelong Republicans. That was a good read. That was a good read. Um, hey, Jack, I dig the Biden look. Uh, oh, with my sunglasses? I got to wear it so that I don't blow out my friggin' eyes, Mark. Uh, Mark Viola, by the way, is, uh, is a person that sent me this article. Uh, and uh, uh, I appreciate that. And I encourage you guys to do the same thing. Um, you should, you should send me articles that, uh, I, uh, I should, I should look into and I probably will. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I appreciate Mark for sending me this article, but it was a very good, it was a very, um, well written article, a lot of good thoughts, a lot of good arguments that were made in there. I hope you guys got something out of that. Uh, it, it, it kind of validated some stuff, a lot of stuff that I've been saying for the last few years. Um, in terms of like, okay, we got to really start listening to each other here. This response uh, to Trump, who is sort of the the symptom in the face and the mascot of corporatism and uh, pop and, and right wing populism uh, and this strongman complex and this American exceptionalism that's been failing America's for a long America for a long time. Uh, why did this happen? Why did people think that this was the right solution? Let's talk to people. And I got shit on a lot for saying that. Um, and, uh, and, you know, I, I feel like that might be the path forward in talking to Republicans, because when I've talked to Republicans that have come out to see my shows, when I've talked to conservatives who have come out to see my shows, um, they kind of look at me and kind of do the same thing, right? They're just kind of like, yeah, I never thought about it that way. And that's kind of a cool thing to hear, in all honesty, is... Um, that that they were like, yeah, I didn't. I never really thought about it that way. You you changed the way that I looked at something, and then when I sit down and talk to them, I go, oh, I never thought about it the way you're presenting it. That's really cool, man. Like you made me think a little bit differently about certain issues, um, you know. And I got I got to say, like Jay Jackson does this a lot. Whenever we talk, is we'll have we'll have these similarities, and then Jay will just take a a you know. 10 degrees over to the left and I'll go, Oh, I never really thought about it that way. That's a good point. Thank you for bringing that up and adding that to my perspective, because I don't think I would have had that perspective had you not brought it up. And I think these conversations are very important to have um, rather than yelling and screaming at each other. Um, I, I believe in talking about ideas. That's sort of the thing that I think I'm, I'm trying to move forward with. So uh, let's talk about these ideas. Let's talk about why they work, why they don't, why why you feel abandoned by them, and what's what's going on with you. Uh, I think that's let let's add some let's add some humanity to to the policies and the thoughts and ideas that we believe in. What's going on, everybody? If you enjoyed this video, there is more stuff like this coming on this channel. So make sure you hit that subscribe button hit that bell icon to make sure you're getting updates about my videos. Make sure you hit that like button because uh, I think there's a dislike campaign happening on the channel. There's like one person that's just disliking all my shit. That's weird. Uh, but uh, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the share button. Get the word out about this channel. Uh, and there are going to be more videos like this. But if you enjoyed this videos and you want to be a part of the live comedy experience in this virtual world that we're living in now uh, where, uh, where all the performance art is going virtual uh, for the time being you can join my zoom live stand-up comedy shows it's called the citizen revolution comedy show uh, the first one is on may 8th uh, and they will be consecutively every other week all of the dates are available on my website right now ramen noodles comedy.com that's r-a-m-a-n noodles comedy.com Go grab your tickets 
right now. They're only five bucks. Five bucks gets you in, um, and it's five bucks per residence, not five bucks per person. Uh, it's just to grab you a spot. Uh, so go to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R A M A N noodlescomedy.com. Grab your ticket. Come hang out with me. Uh, if you can, you can become a sustaining member over on the website. Sustaining members get free tickets uh, to come see the Zoom virtual Citizen Revolution comedy show. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well. Uh, but all of this stuff helps keep me afloat, uh, keeps me uh, being able to put food on the table uh, and cover all of my bills and expenses uh, to make sure that I'm putting out regular content. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing. Hope to see you again. Stay safe.